and welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd i'm your host mikey and today we are going to explore a fabulous granny square where the center is extremely raised to do a really great effect just like so so this is a part of a pattern it's called field of dreams and i'll provide a link to get that free pattern in the more information of this video you should know that in this uh, sample i chased the outside around with single crochet just for tutorial reasons but you know it you are the artist you can follow the instructions to be able to put these together there's not a lot of work when it comes to putting these things together and if you can figure out a way that makes it easier for you hey at Red Heart we're all game for that let me turn this over show you what the back looks like so you can see that the purple does not go all the way through it actually attaches to the middle of the flower at a certain point as well and we have a fabulous project ready and lined up for you so today you're going to need a size 5 millimeter or a size H crochet hook today. I'm going to be using Red Heart with Love for my sample and obviously you can substitute the yarn and the hook as long as they complement each other for this pattern. So let's begin right now. So to start off with today we have three major colors. We have the interior and you can see that here on the back. It's only for a little bit and then it's gone. And then we have the flower color and you know what you can also do the flower colors two different colors if you wish instead of being solid. You can also just use the same color if you wished for the entire flower. You know the creativity is really up to you. And then of course we have our background. This afghan has the potential to be a million different colors. It's up to you. And uh, I'm going to use, uh, just for fun today, I'm going to be using the With Love. And I'm going to be starting off with this lip knot and starting off with blue. I'm not sure what it's going to look like, but you know what? Let's not judge too quickly and get along with this project. So we have our slip knot on board. Let's chain five. This, remember, never counts as one. So one, two, three three, four, and five. And let's create a ring. So we're just going to slip the hook into the first chain and grab the yarn and pull through so we have a nice center circle. So that's how you start the first part of this flower. So let's begin. We're simply just going to chain one and then we're just going to follow the instructions. Now you're going to think it's a lot of yarn going into a little hole. It is. So if you're thinking, oh, it's too much, <laughs> it probably is true. So let's begin. We're going to slip or do a single crochet first into the center of the ring and then we're going to chase it down with two double crochet. This is important so don't forget. So two double crochet. So for me I would just say this is one. Okay. So that's one section. Now we're going to do that again. So we're going to go single crochet, two double crochet, single crochet, double, cro uh, two double crochet. So this is how I do it. So I go single crochet for two because we've already got one in here and double crochet for two. And make sure you put two of those in there. So double crochet for two. This is how I keep count. So now I'm going to do it again. So we're going to go single crochet for three because it's the third one in and then double crochet for three. When I did my sample I was off by one and I should have done this way. So okay so let's go to the next one. Single crochet for four. Double crochet for four. And double crochet for four. If you're running out of space simply just grab the center of the ring and just move it. Okay they, they will all move. So single crochet for five. Double crochet for five. Okay. So now uh, single crochet for six and double crochet for six. Now I'm going to have to start moving stuff because I'm starting to overlap. So that was six. Okay, so just grab it, see how it just all moves. So let's single crochet for seven and double crochet for seven. Told you it's a lot of yarn going in a little hole. So we still have one more set to do. So let's move it again. Okay, so single crochet for eight double crochet for eight and double crochet for eight and what we're going to do is that we're just going to slip stitch the slip stitch this into the very beginning where we did the first single crochet in and we are going to fasten this off and I'm just going to grab my scissors off camera here and I'm just going to grab them grab them grab them trying to buy time as I'm delaying here we go and all I want to just do is fasten this off. And you want to do a nice job of fastening this off. Um, you don't want this falling out because we're not actually 
going to be overlapping too many of these stitches so the loose ends will um, be very exposed. So you're going to want to bury those in. So this will be the first and last time I demonstrate on how to kind of hide in these ends because in some of the rounds you don't actually have to really do much because the next round is going to cover it. But in this case this one's not going to. So I'm just going to clean up the loose ends off camera and when we come back I'm going to be ready for another color. So I'll be right back. So I'm back and my next flower color is going to be pink and you can do it any color you wish. So let's start off with the slip knot. That's my way of really securing it into place and what we need to do is that we need to look for where the single crochets are. It's kind of hard to but if you really look at it you can see it's kind of indentating, indentating down and if you can identify the very first one the rest of them are going to be right in front of your face. But what you're going to do is that you're going to slip it in to the back loop. So you see that there's two loops. Okay, so one and two and so you'll want to go into the back loop, the second one in only and you want to just fasten on this yarn. So just grab it and pull it through. Okay, and I'm just moving the string in behind and what I want to do with the string is that it will be exposed. I'm going to, when I go to chain up, I'm going to use both of them for a couple and then I'm going to let it fall and this is in, in behind, you will not see it. So let's uh, begin and what we're going to do is that we're going to chain three. So one, see how I'm using both, two, and three. Okay, and then I'm going to let that straggler fall. So one, two, three and what you want to do is that you want to come to the next single crochet. So if you remember single crochet and two doubles, that means if you count over one and two, the third one there is the single. And I can tell it is anyway because it's sunken in slightly. Coming into the back loop only, let's just grab the yarn, pull through and through. We're just doing a slip knot or a slip stitch and then we're going to chain three again. So one, two and three and then again I'm just looking for the next single crochet coming into the back loop only. Coming into the back loop only and then chain three, one, two and three and again moving to the next single crochet. So please do that all the way around. Your goal is to make sure that when you go all the way around you are going to have eight empty spaces. So if you pull them like this, one, two and three. If you do it right and your counts are right you will have eight left over holes on the outside and that's exactly what we're looking for. So when you get all the way back around you will be chaining your three, one, two and three and you got to make sure you do cover this last one and we're going to slip stitch right into the where we started the very first one. Right there. So if you count now these empty spaces, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight, you know you're, that you're good to go. So let's uh, move up. We're going to move up the round now and this we're not going to chain one like we normally would starting on a round. We are simply just going to do the same thing in each one of these holes. You are going to single crochet first. So we immediately just start single crocheting and then what we're going to do is that we're going to double crochet. Then we're going to treble crochet. So we're going to wrap and wrap. So we're doing a treble. Okay and then we come back in and do a double. So we're going to get smaller. So we're doing petals of the flower and then we're going to single crochet. So once you get that done you're going to just jump to the next petal area. So the next gap and start again. So single and then we have double. Okay we have treble. Okay and then we're going to start making it smaller again. So we're going to do double as we come down make it smaller and then single. So I'll review one more time. So that happens in every gap. So we're going to do single. We're going to do double. We are going to do treble. We're going to do double and then single. So continue to do that all the way around. We'll be back up in just a moment. So I've now come all the way back around and I just want to slip stitch into where I started. Okay, so the first single crochet we're just going to slip stitch in and we are going to move behind the project in this next round. So when I say behind I don't really, yeah, just stick with me here. <laughs> don't listen to me folks, I don't know what I'm doing. So what we have to do is that I have to get this hook into, the, see how these stitches are pulling? These are the back loops. Now we're going to be working with those one more time. So what I want to do is that I want to kind of turn it over a little bit and I want to create, I want to get those loops again. So I'm just going to slip my hook in behind and grab the one side of it and pull it through. And we're going to slip stitch. So we're just going to pull through and through. And then I want to chain four. So one, two, 
three and four and then I wanna move to the next one. So here's the next one over here and I just wanna grab it. Same stitch and pull through and through. Okay, so do you get that? So one, two, three and four. Come turn it around just to look at it and come into the same stitch. So please do that all the way around and we'll come back in just a moment. We'll start the next part of the flower. When you get all the way back around you're simply just going to slip stitch to where you started. So into the same stitch. We're just gonna pull through and through. So we're already where we need to be and now we need to focus on this layer here. These empties here and this flowering petaling is going to be a slightly bigger. So for this one let's begin. We're going to do a single crochet. So here's the order. Single crochet, double crochet and then we're gonna have three trebles. So wrap and wrap for one and another one. So wrap and wrap for two and wrap and wrap for three. Okay and then we're gonna come down and we're gonna do a double. Okay and then a single. So we don't chain or anything at this point. We simply are just ready to move along. So we just immediately grab the next one. So we single. Here's the order again. So single, double, so then we got, whoops, and then we have to do trebles. So three trebles. So one, whoops, excuse me, draw my stitches. One, and then wrap and wrap for two. That string is getting on my nerves. <laughs> that was two, and then wrap and wrap for three. And of course we have another double as we work our way downward, down the pedal on the other side and then single. So please do that all the way around on this round and when we come back we are going to be done using this pink and we're gonna move along and start doing the out exterior of the square. So I'm now finished doing the second layer. You can see it's really starting to pop out now. You can always use this as an accessory too if you didn't ever wanna do a square. So we're just going to join it with a slip stitch and this is it for this color here. We're gonna start doing the exterior. You're gonna to wanna to do a good job in hiding this um, loose end the tail ends uh, you might want to really fasten it down just to get rid of out of, out of you know out of out of sight out of mind kind of that idea. So you just can weave it in and I'd recommend getting a, a darning needle and just kind of sewing it in there just to really make sure that it's uh, snug. As you can tell in the marketing that it's been uh, uh, marketed for children so if you're going to want to really pay attention to that. So let's uh, begin. We're going to do our next layer next. So let's begin our next color. This is going to be starting of, in this one it's the case of the purple here. We're going to be starting and you can kind of get a glimpse that we're going to be joining it again in the back and basically this is what it would look like at this point. So let's uh, begin. This is so simple it's not even funny. So I'm going to create a slip knot so I can have extra security and what I want to do, remember how we joined this already to the, to the one single crochet that we already had going on. We're going to be joining in that exact same spot again. So we're just going to come in and just slip in and we want to slip stitch. Now this is in behind the afghan. So what I would recommend is that grabbing the, the yarn that is the loose end plus the one from the yarn ball pull through and chain four times. So one and two and three and four you're not gonna see it so you can do that. So therefore you don't have to worry about sewing in the loose ends afterward. So what I wanna do is that I wanna come into the next one that you see and we're going to do another slip stitch. So into the exact same stitch. You just gotta make room. Um, I found in the first one I found it really hard but once I understood the pattern it's really easy. So one and then we're gonna chain four. So one, two, three and four and then coming into the next one that you see. So lots of room there. You just gotta look for it and do that all the way around and when we come back I'll show you what to do next. Okay so we come all the way back around and simply I just want to slip stitch it exactly where I've joined it again. So in actual fact I just missed it. You can see that I missed it. So I want to come back right back in and slip stitch it to where the other one is as well. So here's the catcher. Okay listen up ladies and gentlemen. So here's the catcher of this one. Just gonna do it one more time. I want to make sure I get it right. What I want to do is that I've been going around and I need to really concentrate on my left and good, uh, my bad and my good side. What I want you to do is now is that I want you to turn it so that you have to lean forward and work toward the outside. 
just like so. It makes a difference. So let's uh, begin and um, the instructions look a little bit long for the next uh, few layers but really there's just a lot of writing but it is exceptionally simple. So what we're going to do is that we're going to slip stitch into the first chain four space. So this is your first one right here. Okay, so I've turned it so we're going to slip stitch. So we're just going to grab the yarn and pull through and now we're ready to go. And essentially what we have to do is that we ha we're creating our very first corner. So to do that we're going to chain three first. One, two, three. And then we're going to two double crochet in. Now in normal granny squares the corners are always the same. This one isn't. So we have to make sure we're watching that as we go. So that was your three. And then what we're going to do is um, chain three. So one, two and three. Remember when I said by three this chaining of three counts as one of the double crochets. So there's three, there's chain three and then there's three more double crochets into that same hole. And you're going to see this layer starting to protrude outward from underneath of this flower. Okay, so there is your first corner. So in the next space that we have, that's the space in between the corners. So the next gapping space is the in between and the next one is the corner. So if you can visualize that, you're laughing. So what we're going to do first is that we're going to chain one and then we're going to single our uh, three double crochets into this but wait. You're going to double crochet and then chain one. Double crochet, or sorry, and then uh, chain one. <laughs> so okay, so we had a chain one, double crochet, chain one and then double crochet, chain one and double crochet and chain one. Okay, so you're going to have the chain one, double crochet, there's a chain one here, double crochet, chain one here, double crochet, chain one here. So now we're ready for the next corner. This makes a difference in the next one. So you got to make sure you get that right. So the corners for this particular round are three double crochets first. One, two and three and then chaining three. One, two, three. I'm not sure why I keep dropping stitches tonight. Okay, so we're going to three double crochet. I don't think my hook is extra. I think it might be the operator. <laughs> okay, so we got our next corner in. Whoa. Okay, and what we want to do then is start the next middle. So we're going to chain one first and then we're looking for this next gap. So this is the, the middle of a section. Okay, so we're going to double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain, chain one, okay, double crochet, Must be the yarn. I don't think so but it's me. Okay and then chain one. Okay so we have our three in there and then we're ready for the next corner. And that's three double crochet. Could be my posture too. So one, two, three. So that's three chains. We're turning the corner so we're coming back into the same one. One, two, and three and then chain one. We're in the middle again so we're looking for the next one. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and then double crochet. So gotta make sure you get there and then chain one. And then we're on the next corner again. So it's three double crochets. So I'm just taking you around this complete round just to make sure you get it because it's important you start off right and then this is a corner. So it's ch uh, three double crochet, chain three, then three double crochet in, I was exceptionally impressed with this pattern how well it came together. Okay, so now we're going to chain one. And we're in the last gap that's available so we're going to double crochet and then chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and then we are just going to simply just join it to the top of the beginning of the beginning chain. 
and that completes that round. So now you can see that the square is starting to grow underneath of the flower. So let's begin our next row next. So to begin our next round it's actually really simple. There's a lot of writing but just stick with me folks. It's easy. So the next we're just going to slip stitch into the next one like so and then we're going to chain three. So one, two and three and then what I want you to do is that we're going to be working on the edge. So add another one so that it'll actually be chaining four. Okay. It will make sense in just a few moments. And what we're going to do is that we're going to go around this uh, bad boy again and this time we're going to do three double crochets. The corner is not the same as it was before. So three double crochet, chaining of two this time not three. So chaining of two and then three double crochet on the other side of that same corner. So here's the catch. What you're going to do is that you're just going to simply chain one. You're going to skip the first double crochet, come to the second. Okay, so come to the second. Now I should tell you this first one is actually buried underneath these here. So if you follow it up the first one's right here but when you do it this one here is going to look like it's covering it. Make sure that you go into the middle one of the three if you cannot see it. And this is the fun part. So you're going to chain one. You're going to come into the next gap. Oops, so you're going to double crochet into the next gap. Okay, chain one going into the next gap of a double crochet. Chain one to the next gap. How hard is that? Chain one to the next gap. And this time now yeah, you're running into the corner. So you're chaining one first. You're going into the middle one of the three so far because you're not yet on the corner for a double crochet and you're going to chain one and now begin the corner again. So we're going to three double crochet like so and then chain two and then three double crochet again. So I'll take you around just this last side just to refresh again. So once you get your three in there chain one, go to the second one over for double crochet chain one, go into the gap. So it's the gap. That's your next spot. Okay, chain one, go in between these double crochets. Chain one, go into the next in between. Chain one, go into the next in between which is the, the next gap. Chain one, go into the middle of the three. Chain one, and then do your corner of three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Continue that for the remainder of this um, this row or this round and when we come back I'm going to move you up to the next round. We don't have very much more to do so this is a really fun and easy project to follow. So I'll meet you back in just a moment. So we come all the way back around and simply don't forget you need to chain one before attaching it and you're only going to the third one up. Remember how we started off with four? That's because after you do that it has to have its dedicated space. So what we're going to do on this round here is that we are just going to uh, chain three. So immediately chain three, one, two and three and we're going to double crochet into this chain one space and this whole round is actually is probably the most labor intensive of them all in the sense that you're not skipping any stitches. So let's uh, begin. We are going to double crochet into each of these stitches here. There's three of them before you get to the corner. So this is a solid round. Okay and then once we get to the corner so the corner is changed once again. We're only going to do two double crochet in the corner followed by two chain and then two double crochet again. So, you, so I've really not seen too many squares that do that so that's a kind of an interesting concept. So here's the catch. We want to make this whole row solid. So we just have to make sure we capture every one here. Remember what I said about here. You don't forget that first one or it'll throw your counts off. So you're double crocheting into each one of the double crochets that you see and then the catcher is is that we have a gapping space we crochet right into it. Okay and then the next double crochet and then the next gap and then the next double crochet. So continue to do that all the way around your, your particular um, square 
you can see it's really not really a brainer. It's just you just gotta do it. So when we come back we have one more round to go and uh, it's really a fun and fabulous to be crocheting with you today. So I've now come almost all the way back around and simply I still have this gapping space before I've gotten to my chaining of three. So we just want to join it with the slip stitch there and we just have one more round to go and it will complete off today's square. So let's start that next. The final round is actually really fabulous. You're just going to slip over one more. So just slip over one stitch and then you're going to chain four. So one, two, three and four and this will count as a double crochet slash chain one. You're simply just going to basically crochet every other every other stitch that you run into and then you just put a chain one in between. So you just keep doing this until you get to a corner. So chain one, skip the next one on here. Okay, so you're gonna skip the next one. So that means you're in a corner. So make sure you chain one first and then this corners are two double crochet, chain two and two double crochet. Okay, so let's begin. We're going to do a full side together. We're going to chain one first. We're going to skip the first one and go to the second. If you're ever in doubt, just follow it up and you'll find it. Okay, so double crochet. Chain one. We skip and one and go to the second. Okay, chain one and then we skip one and go to the next. Chain one, skip one and go to the next. Chain, chain one. I think my tension's off today, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, and we keep doing that all the way across. So you'll see this. So that one that we did solid really does stand out really nicely when you're doing that. So when you're looking at the actual model's photo, you can really kind of get a glimpse that there's something unusual about this particular square. Okay, chain one and we will end up in one stitch before you get to the corner. Okay, so you still have one more. So we chain one, do another corner. So two double crochet. Chain two and two double crochet. So continue to do that same premise all the way around. I'm going to chase this with a border just in case you are interested in that and you can refer to the instructions for putting everything together if you care to do so. And you can always just use your regular sewing practices and etc. in order to do that. So I'll meet you back up in just a moment. When you get back around you should end up one stitch prior so there should be an empty stitch. Make sure you do chain one and then attach it to the third chain up of the four and voila you are then going to fasten off and when I come back what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chase it around with the border. If this were me and I had creative choice which I do but if it was for me what I would do is probably put on a nice border on this right away and then just use my my uh, darning needle to sew everything together. That's what I would do. You can follow the instructions. Uh, you can still get a great look. It's just up to you on what you want to do at this point. So I think this is a really fun and cute afghan. So without further ado let me just uh, bring this back and I want to just add a, another border, uh, border to it and just kind of give you a glimpse on what the final would look like at this point. So I'm going to add a border to it. This does not say this in the instructions. Not at this point that's for sure. So I'm just going to join it in between any one of these at this point. I'm actually going to join it in between an actual stitch itself not into a gap. I did on the last one and, and uh, you could actually tell and I wasn't too happy with it. So I'm going to join it right into a stitch and I'm going to chain one and single crochet into that same stitch to start this off. Let's keep the straggler down on top and then I'm just going to single crochet into the gap space and then the next one is single crochet into the next double crochet. So gap and double. Okay, gap and double. So I'm going to make, so see how simple this is? That's what I would do. You know, fake it or make it. It's still going to look fabulous. Okay, I'm just going to pull my stitch out. I think I am having operator error today. And just continuing. I want to show you what I'm going to do on the corner before I let you go today. 
because if you're gonna do something like this you're gonna wanna make sure all your corners are consistent so when you sew together you don't have any mismatching going on. Okay, so easy, just gap, double. Okay, so I'm in the corner. So I have two double crochets so in a row which makes sense. And then on these corners because you chain two, I would put two only in there. And then just turn it and then just work your way down the other side. So continue to do that all the way around. I'll come back, have it nice and fastened off and we can just review one quick last time before we let you go for today. So I'm just coming around to finish up today and this concludes Field of Dreams. This is a gorgeous square. And in fact, you know what? I honestly just seen this pattern today. It's been on Red Heart for a while, but I just seen this pattern today, if you can imagine it. Um, I found a secret when searching the engines on Red Heart is that if you really do use that pattern selector, you see stuff that you would not normally see because I'm a person that I always like to enter in words. But if you let that pattern searcher do things and just kind of be open-minded, it's amazing what you'll find on redheart.com. Now I would probably use a, if we're gonna sew this together, just weave it in a little bit and then when you go to sew that you'll just capture this in place so you don't need to really be too fussy about it at this particular point or you can uh, use a darning needle and fasten it in. So this concludes this uh, Field of Dreams and you can see it's really kind of fun, fabulous and it is amazing and so you can really virtually do as many different colors as you want. Um, it's really quite remarkable. So on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet card it's my pleasure to, to teach you today. We'll see you next time as we have more free patterns and ideas coming up real soon. We'll see you.